好，各位同事。Colleagues, we had a quorum at the appointed time. Let's start this meeting. Today we'll wrap at meeting at seven. If necessary, I will extend the meeting to fifty minutes at most. My reminded members, if you have any direct or indirect pecuniary interest on the items we discussed, in accordance to eighty-three A of the RIP, first let's close the nature interest before you speak. And all urge members take note of RIP eighty-four on voting. On matters with direct but acute interest, I am the advisor of the uh, Bank of China Hong Kong. Today, we first deal with FCR 2019-2017. Invite members to approve a new commitment of 160 million for the payment of exam fees for the school candidates sitting for the 2020 Hong Kong Diploma of Secondary Education Examination (HKDSE). And the ADB have consulted the education panel on March 29, 2019. And the panel has scrutinized the proposal for 14 minutes. Today, we have the following present uh, Under Secretary for Education, Dr. Choi Yuk Lin, Deputy Secretary for Education, Mrs. Hong Chen Choi Wa, PS for Education, Ms. Wendy L. And Secretary General for H Hong Kong Examination Assam Assessment Authority (HKEA), Dr. Seo Kwok Sang, who have the Chairman of the Education Panel to report the findings of the Education Panel. And Chairman, um, Tony Che, I written to the Secretary on the item number four that the weather we need to discuss separately. I don't think we need to discuss that, and well, for efficiency's sake, can we vote on that? Um, Mr. Chair, we have received uh, your request of not having to vote separately, and however, Mr. Al had wrote to request to vote separately on this item, and since the member have made such request that the item will uh, will be uh, discussed when we arrive at that. Understood. Mr. Yip, please continue. On the education panel meeting on 2019, March 29, we've discussed that the government's proposal to pay exam fees for the school candidates sitting for the 2020 HKDSE. Members have support the administration measure, but strongly urge uh, to regularize the Proposed one of measures and also to extend the measures to cover private candidates, on which we have passed two motions urging that the government to uh, recognize the proposed one of measures and to ex and offer uh, uh, to cover private candidates and roll the HKDSE in immediate following year after their first attempt. The administration response have been circulated to all members on the motions. Well, I have some personal comments. We're supposed to press the button. Well, as the chairman of the panel, so uh, oh, let's say I'll give you five minutes each round. I have reported that there's a strong view of the panel that why do not regularize this arrangement? This is the second time in dealing with this payment of exam fees. And last year, we have been strong views and turn, hopefully we can turn it into a regular measure. Well, this rationale is simple. We talk about 12 years of free education. The secondary and primary school education been fully covered. As the uh, final uh, outlet for the 12th year education calendar can be included that uh, part of the free education. And then we don't have to uh, discuss that in the logical year after year. And and each time the pa the pa uh, um, the HKE may worry that we're not able to approve the proposal in time and will make things troublesome for them. Thus, we hope that from now on, we can regularize the payment 
of HKDSA candidates by the government. I hope the administration can respond. Would that be something they're willing to consider? Dr. Choi. Uh, so, um, Mr. Yip mentioned of the regularizing the exam fee payments uh, we are being considered. Uh, we say that this is a one off measure for uh, relief. And regularizing the um, payment of exam fees is a HKEA policy as an independent statutory body. They involved the review of the uh, statutory legislation. The government have been discussing with HKEA on the payment of exam fees, uh, which will be included as part of the review. Anything to add, Mr. Yip? So, can you give us a rough IJ for the income of the HKEA we cannot be revised in a year's time. For the HKDSE exam fees payment is happening annually. Can we check this as a priority? Otherwise we need to wait a long time and then it would be table to Let's go annually. That would be a, not efficient. Like I said, this involve a more uh, complex policy issue. You already start the discussion. It will take about two years time uh, to uh, work out that arrangement. So we need to be study in detail, of well as a practical long term concern. The four members press the button. The first, Mr. Kwang Chen Yu. Five minutes. First, I need to follow up on the undersecretary response. I'm not able to give it a positive answer. So, to pay exam fees for the HKDSE candidates, I wonder can you make it regular? Since it's actually in proposed in the budget and then and approved. So for the students, especially the grassroots students, this is quite a financial burden for them. By waiving the exam fees, you're offering some relief. However, it will be subject to the budget arrangement. Why can't the government be decisive that you're able the government to take up the fees from now on instead of not limited to school candidates, but also cover the private candidates? Also notice that the exam fees are rising year on year as if it's getting more expensive. By 2020 it need to be increased by 4%. The HKE position is that um, it's inevitable because um, the number of candidates is falling and need to uh, show them more of the cost. On the other hand, the government has provided $360 million for the next four years. Why exam fees rising is any way to um, achieve cost savings? We think very much relevant to our item, the whether we can regularize the exam fee waiver arrangements. Dr. Choi, on the payment regularization, we note the members' comments. See, well, this is a rather complex a policy revision we will expeditiously discuss with HKEAA in hoping with a practicable solution as or the rising exam fees. The f the HKDSE well the HKEA is losing money. So it's not about uh breaking even but taking into account the actual inflation rate. Even with the price increase, we are still losing money. In fact the number of candidates have been kept Dropping, and while well, uh, the exam fee costs are fixed, yet. and for the special arrangements, and the number of special test papers and the design of the papers, have also added to the entire exam cost. 
and on the funding relief for HKEA are unrelated to the payment of exam fees because we take into account of the actual operation requirements. And members are worried about uh, the burden of the parents and students. However, uh, we're not asking um, the students to uh, show their the, the increase. And another part of the question will be how do you cut down the cost? Well, the ultimate goal of the exam, well, uh, we to able uh, to. Uh, and show the learning outcome where we can be streamlined and achieve doing cost savings. The EA have been consulting the public. And the secretary, let me be direct. If, like you said, you've been earnestly discussing with EA on the uh, proposal, well, um, well, I don't think there's some urgency. So maybe. This year, since we talk about this now at FC Worth, by the same time next year, there will be some good news to us so that we can feel their sub government support towards students. We have a discussion on the time frame of the 316 million will be a four year a buffer. The HDSE involving um, the tens of thousands of students and families, and we just need to consider just the exam fees issue in uh, greatly affect their learning, since uh, well, um, their learning will take decades in planning. So we have to take it prudently. And can you tell us when you can give us an answer that you could regularize your waiver arrangement? Like we said. We expect it will take a uh, what a four year to time frame. For the time being, I can't promise to you whether it's happening same time next year because we need to give it enough time to the EAA to handle this. Next, Miss Claudia Mo, five minutes. Uh, well, well, you are you saying 160 million to um pay for the examination fees for school candidates sitting for the 2020 HK DSE. Of course, nobody would uh, object to it. It would be passed. However, education expenditure is the greatest expenditure for the government annually. It's, 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 about, it's about 80 billion. Even 100 billion, it's a huge sum. Carrie Lam also said that um, there would be 5 billion new resources and there will be 2 billion added. Well, it is only now 160 million that's, that's now uh, being engaged. And so you're coming back again. And you will say, you are say by 2020. You well, what about 2021? Would it be regularized? Are you only paying for one year 2020? That wouldn't do. You are saying that you will be active and you will be speeding up discussions with the HKEAA. Have we to wait for four years? Perhaps for the next uh, annual budget. You should have this uh, 160 million earmarked for the examination fees, so that you don't have to come up, come up year after year. As for the private candidates, you are saying that um, you, this uh, this uh, waiver could only be have uh, to to be had um, through the schools. But what about the private candidates? Well, he failed last year. He wanted to come back. Well, education is free. I'm afraid you don't have any commitment for these uh, candidates. Well, no one would object to the 2020 payment. But what about 2021? You have about um, 360 million for the HKEAA. You are saying that it has nothing much to do with the uh, rising examination fees. I'm rather confused. Well, 
for the regularization of such payment mentioned by Mrs. Mao, we're now putting out um, a proposal for one off payment for these examination fees. Well, uh, don't put the uh, one off as yet uh, sing in Cantonese. Well, okay, I will use dan uh, Well, this is a relief measure. I also explained that this um, regularization of payment of examiner fees, it is not a 160 million. It is the matter of this HKEAA is an independent statutory organization, and you need to have um, policy revision involved. And it would uh, involve uh, quite um, a big area. So for the practical implementation and for the uh, legislation, we have to review them before we can do that. As for the private candidate, well, for the one-off relief fund, a relief measure, we are targeting uh, the um, interests of um, the current candidates. And if you have to enlarge it, enlarge the waiver for private candidates, well, there will be worries for the students and uh, families. Would be there be not so serious candidates coming in as well? So after consider considerable uh, consideration, we are uh, um, putting out such a proposal as it stands now. Well, of course, private candidates, we recognize their active um, continuous studies, whether the that has nothing to do with the um, waiver of fees because we recognize the efforts of the private candidates. As for the uh, three point uh, three hundred and sixty million for the HKEAA for subvention, it will be a buffer of four years, um, so that we can have a review, comprehensive review of the HKEAA. Mr. Gary Fan, well, payment of examination fees for the school candidates sitting for the twenty twenty HKDSE. It is similar to that of uh, the year before. Now, it is a relief uh, measure to uh, reduce the burden of uh, parents and students. Well, that would also a measure to help the HKEAA. The DSE candidates number is uh, reducing, so there's been a rise of 4% increasing examination fee uh, successively for the last five years. So in the uh, education panel and in the finance panel, there are about um, 300 million that will be allocated to the HKEAA. Even if there is um, a rise in the examination fees for 2020, yet there still will be deficit uh, for the HKEAA. The HKEAA is um, responsible for their deficits, so they have to make adjustments. Uh, the two meetings of the HKEE um, have not um, have not uh, responded to the um, salaries for the high-level uh, HKEAA. What about um, changing the structure where you have a lot of salaries for the higher ups? If if it, there's still deficit, if they are going to raise their management management fees and the exam fees, and they are applying for grants, etc. Well, I'm afraid that this is a vicious cycle, and the deficit would still appear. And you are uh, using the public money to uh, make up for the deficit of the HKEAA. Has the Education Bureau um, looked into that? So how many HKDSE examination fees are the government 
should pay in order to make the HKEAA break even? Is there a, a, a estimation? As for Mr. Fan's um, question, well, this um, payment of examining fees and the uh, financial difficulties of the HKEE are not are two different matters. They have to have more resources, and they have to do something about the um, their, their deficit. Well, there is a reduction of candidates, the complexity of the exams, and also special can uh, as and also candidates for special disciplines, and that is why the costs are higher. Well, staff. Salaries are uh, is also uh, uh, an area, but it is all very transparent and fair. So when we discuss with the Education Bureau, we will consider all these questions together. Of course, these two are related because your answer proves that we are now uh, looking into the matter whether they are rational. And it is not the first time I raised the question, and the HKEE has not put forward any specific measures to um, do something about that deficit. You are giving them time review for review and for uh, seeking a solution, but there is, should be a timeline. Well, we are discussing it. The since we are discussing it, so that will be done in an appropriate time after a consensus with the Education Bureau and after discussion with stakeholders. And also, we will come to you for further uh, uh, views. Mr. Chen Ji Chen, I think all members would, would uh, support the payment of examination fees for 2020 HKDSE, a payment of 160 million. However, the Education Bureau or the administration have not listened to the logical views. The, uh, pa the Education Panel has expressed its views. However, at the end of uh, March at that meeting, we have passed two missions. Uh, with the majority vote for, it's not my uh, motion. One motion is urging the administration on the payment of examination fees uh, for the um, DSED. It is a promotion proposed by Starry Lee, uh, supported by a lot of members. Another motion is uh, from Mr. Silka Chen. If you cannot uh, help all the uh, uh, candidates, you are afraid that the private candidate would also uh, come up and said that they would come anyway for the exam, and that will um, increase the number of candidates with uh, uncertainties. Well, you are now limiting it. and. So last year, if you had you have set for the exam last year, and if um, there are uh, subjects that have not uh, uh, won uh, gained uh, enough marks, he could come back. Well, uh, this to solve that, um, we passed an, a motion, and the administration has disregarded the two motions. We are not going to ask several rounds of questions. However, I hope that the administration should pay attention to the views that we expressed. So these two motions, we will uh, pro present it again by uh, 37A, Rules of Procedure. So I hope that you would um, support these two motions. I am not really uh, uh, filibustering. I will, because all parties concerned are in support of uh, this payment of examination fees and the regularization. Well, because regularization will save us time, because last year we discussed it for over two hours, and the same with this year. Well, I'm afraid that they have not listened to the views expressed in LegCo. 
I hope that the government administration will say that you have list, you have heard the regularization um, uh, demand. Well, you can say that you uh, you stand with us, or you will you will uh, go forward towards this goal, or you you you, are, you you say that you do not support the regularization of uh, such payment. Well, a little pay more payment to the candidates for those private candidates. Well, why is it so difficult? Why don't you include those uh, private candidates when f for the estimates presented by Chen Kimpo? Well, it would it should be covered. It should cover all candidates. However, people were angry because they were angry with the estimates, not because of uh, the um, payment for uh, all candidates. The Education Bureau uh, retreated and uh, didn't want to go one step forward. Well, in future, would you consider private candidates which said it for the second time uh, or who said it uh, the year before, would you include them? Well, as for the regularization of such a measure, I, I replied already that in the future discussion with the HKEAA, uh, we would discuss your proposal. What is the administration stand if there is uh, such a, a need and if it is feasible? We have no uh, particular reason to be against it and we will include that as a matter of discussion with the HKEA, HKEAA. For the uh, private candidates, well, for the candidates through the, um, through the uh, schools, they would be included in uh, the one that sat before a year before and would come back again. So, of course, for f to be assured, well, what do you mean by to be assured? If there is no a uh, limitation for the uh, private candidate, if you uh, have your uh, cool down and uh, reflect more on it, if a private uh, candidate, when he wants to come back, he could go through the school to sit for all the subjects or for only several subjects. Well, if you don't have a scope or limit, um, even if you include the uh, last year candidates and this year uh, comeback candidate, that would be double. So I think f to be sure, that is why for the eligibility, we are saying that we have to go through the candidates at the school, the candidates that would be day school, uh, evening school, or uh, the other candidates would be included. Yeah. Next, Lin Yun Chong, five minutes. Like uh, Mr. Ray Chan said, I believe that the members you know, present would definitely would not object to the two motions passed by the education panel and will support them. Your secretary claims that we keep listening to members' views. It's pointless just to listen. If you just stick to your policy, like Kara Lam, that is all like um, on ho hogwash. How, it's a matter of how do you uh, implement it that you claim that you would discuss with HKEA on the regularizing the arrangement. From the EAA perspective, even in my discussion with them, the government payment of the fees, uh, well, what's bad about it? At least you will cut down the administrative work. It also assures that they will, don't need to uh, recover the fees. Well, uh, please don't say you want to discuss with EAA. If you actually agree, the EAA, of course, wouldn't object. I don't see what the grounds are. That's my first point. Second. And Carrie Van said, HKEA income source are limited. They mainly come from the open exams. It's either local or overseas, and that's it. So looking at the local public exams, the number of candidates is dropping and will drop for the foreseeable future. You know, what I can increase to 
the fees otherwise you can't break even however if you increase the fees you add the burden on parents and the students so you must offer them subsidy so if you need to go through the motions every year it's actually a waste of everyone's time how about this can you willing to uh, review in not asking the EAA to be uh, self-sufficient instead of offering a subsidy let's see hospital authority in which the local are charged one scale and the non Hong Kong residents are charged for another scale so as to sustain the operations and to ensure that the EAA will not need to uh, worry about uh, well, uh, the, about the deficit, need to get the government for the handout, and then they need to jump through all the hoops. I believe that this is a long-term solution. Would the government consider have, uh, fundamentally changing the funding source of EAA, or future of EAA, and for the long-term development and financial commitment of EAA? Like I said. For the over 300 million that will give us four years to pluck the problem first. That's this four year buffer, it is a timetable in place. And members also mentioned that why do not uh, regularizing the payment of exam fees as a policy. Whether for EA and EDB is very much willing to uh, proceed with this measure how this is more than just a m m money this is a policy on the EA as a statutory independent body and on us as the assessment policy and financial management of whole a uh, basket of factors even though we are very much uh, willing we need to go through all the uh, procedures as well examining the independent and the credibility of the EAA must be considered as a whole. We came to for the 300 million provide a four year buffer. So within this four years, you will uh, comprehensively review its operations and come up with a new proposal. By the present program, will take two years to this for discussion and two years and to consult the stakeholders and the public. So that, that's four year. We need four years to deal with this. So for two years of public consultation with their proposal, yes. So now that is two years is planned to discuss uh, practicable options, so as to register public views. Next, to the Kiki Kwok, but before he start, I now receive two thirty-seven A motions. If other members would like to move a thirty-seven A motions, uh, please submit them as soon as possible. Next, to the Kiki Kwok, five minutes. First, I support the payment of exam fees for twenty twenty HKDSC candidates. Well, the point of contention isn't this that. Instead, you actually need to go through the schools. For example, the private students that would need to repeat have no, couldn't get any relief. That's a failure. You know that those well, not all of them will may not get it right the first time. Though maybe they need to repeat, reset. For example, within a year. Does it mean? That it's just about a dollar, a few, quite a few thousand dollars. That's quite a substantial sum. The government's proposal is naturally flawed, and more than once, the colleague have told you that this exam fees to the students, to the family members, is quite a substantial burden. Well, you, we all need this exam. We need to sit for public exams if we. I want to get a job. This or an, uh, an average expenditure, so you can't ask the EA to be self-sufficient. It sounds nice, but not feasible. 
so he claimed that the if we ask him to uh, the healthcare sector be self financed there will be all debt because all the 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 SEU daily cost will be twenty to forty thousand dollars a day, and the government wouldn't ask the HA to be a uh, self financing basis for this burden. The government must help them. It's not a, a especially a luxury. It's not that after finishing DSE they wouldn't get, get any happiness or advantages from it. This is something they need to get through in their education. I think we should fully waive the fees. Of course, the undersecretary claim that um, let's just pay off this once first. Okay, of course we will approve this. If government resort to this kind of uh, handouts, as if just a, a small candy or charity to the parents, that's quite uh, hum embarrassing and. I found out from Mr. Yip Kin Yun. The HKDS it should also be reformed because a lot of the candidates devote a lot of time to meet with to certain subjects and have no direct connection to their education quality. For example, for the ch for Chinese subject, you need to take sit for five papers for general studies, six m units. Well, no, that the general study, so this should not be forcing rote memorization. It should be as interactive as possible and without stress. The AC itself should be reformed. We shouldn't really add to the stress and so add to scuttle the students. Besides um, approving this. A few more things. I think we should be these should be waived as soon as possible, and also should reform the regime so as to reduce the stress on students. I'm quite surprised, according to Mr. Yip, not a lot of people is taking physics, chemistry, and biology. Since um, I'll, uh, because they are forced to take on other electives. All for all the talk about STEM is a waste of breath. You. If, if for, for the basic science subjects like phys, well, due to this uh, mangled exam system, and for, so the students actually couldn't take these subjects. This is uh, mis, quite mis pathetic. First, we have to reform the uh, fees regime of the HKDSE, that the exam should should not be as the ending point of a sub quality education. We noted the members' comments first. Well, on the regularizing the arrangement at the private schools, already answered that on um, reforming the DSE exams. We actually have a dedicated task force uh, consulting the public, and very soon we'll come up with the proposals. Next, starly five minutes. This is the second year. Well, the government proposing to pay for the exams fees. That's uh, one of the uh, one of the suggestions made on the budget by the uh, DAB. For well, the government still insists of u using a one-off measure. We're quite disappointed. And last year, when we passed the appropriation bill, I told the government that asking them to uh, study regularizing the fee waivers arrangement well that has been spoken by other arrangements so what have you done for the past year you claim it's a policy issue but that have you done anything for the past year in telling the members that you have actually done something and take our comments seriously well student must sit for exams so while well, we're sitting on a huge surplus well we came and putting all the resources but at the end you're not spending that much on students themselves there's uh, over 160 million. You need to be so hesitant, and yet for billions, you wouldn't blink an eye. Can you explain what you've done for the past year? And last year, I've also criticized the government that uh, uh, to um, excluding the private student. You seem to be worried about uh, people uh, sitting for exams for fun. 
well, I'm rejecting this and yet you will not for any supporting measures for the private students. I'm quite disappointed. Private students should be supported and they just want to get a second chance and yet you are denying this privilege. I don't think that private student won't sit for the exam without this waiver. I think this is unfair though. Is that that you will not support private students or what policies do you have in place? Under secretary on the regularization and for the long review on the long term fiscal health of EA we already commenced discussion and for the support measures for private students we are uh, recognize acknowledging the private students and also encourage lifelong learning whether through learning or uh, earning credentials will encourage people to study and and for why this year we only including the first time uh, re repeat st students for day and night schools but well, without fully certain that there will not affect other candidates we will take a more conservative approach. And you know, Laura will come up with other ways to help with our private students. Or those who would like to do their own investment, for example, in uh, raising the cap for the con continuous education fund, we can only really help them through these channels. Well, Chairman, I'm disappointed in the undersecretary's answer. Regularizing the exam payment arrangements. I wonder why do we is so slow when it comes to helping students and parents. So how many of the much of the news resources really spent on student and parents? It's just simple as payment of exam fees. Actually, you take years to discuss it. Well, and uh, maybe uh, for the same time next year, you may be able to give the answer when you claimed everything is for the student. It's such a minor measure. Uh, you actually failed. I hope you can take uh, do some soul searching. Even though you are sub uh, claiming you are supporting the private students, and yet your policy had once again you show that you're not supporting them. I want a concrete policy instead of tell get okay, lip service. But when they come back same time next year, you're still excluding them without other supporting measures. So how can you convince us? Hi. Yes, um, and the secretary. We have uh, we have listened to uh, Mrs. Lee's uh, views. Well, of course, the resources given to the students, for instance, the extracurricular uh, activities, we have a uh, um, billion of dollars for that. And so, this for these exam fees, it is a sm uh, relatively small sum. It is not a matter of money. It is because of the independence of the HKEAA and also the exam and assessment policy. And we need time to rationalize all these. As for the 37.A motions, I don't have any objection. I raised that at the panel. Um, I I don't believe that we should, however. I don't believe that we should deal with 37A motions here. Fernando Cheng, I don't really understand. You should give it to all candidates. That has been discussed f several times already. I don't want to repeat. And somehow, I don't understand your fear. Your fear of uh, persons who would go because it is for free and they would uh, register for that because it's free. Would would that be a sudden increase of candidates and that you cannot doubt with it, that exams cannot be arranged? Is that the fear? Under Secretary, if we include private candidates, um, resources could be abused and that could also um, hamper the uh, operation of exams. Mr. Fernando Chang, well, this is rather a failure of the education. 
for the administration, if a student For instance, for some overaged students, they wish to go as a private candidate, and you don't you don't have confidence in them, because the administration says that if uh, such candidates are included and fees are waived, well, your assumption is that there should there would be a quite a sizable number of such candidates who want to hamper and cause sab uh, cause damage to the exam system or abuse uh, resources well this illustrates the administration administra administration's idea of the the young people they don't have confidence in the young people if you give them a free uh, sitting for the examinations, then you assume that they would somehow sabotage the system. And somehow those serious candidates would, would be seriously affected, even affecting their future. Is this the low degree of confidence that you have in the Hong Kong young people? And the secretary, is this not a matter of confidence? The payment of examination, examination fees is a relief measure for those who have ended um, the secretary education to help them to sit for the exam. Private um, Candidates, we encourage their active pursuit of uh, learning, and we have a continuous study uh, funding for that. Um, not wavering their uh, those these candidates' uh, examination fees is not does not mean that uh, we don't have confidence in them. Well, you don't want to pay. Is that the reason? Well. That's a small number of uh, money concerned. Uh, why don't you cover all the candidates? Uh, is that a ma is that because you don't believe in the uh, uh, don't have confidence in the youth? No, and then you said no. We we don't we. It's not that we don't have uh, confidence in the youth. You are going back and forth now. Mr. Chang mentioned um, continuous learning and active pursuit. We have a continuous studies fund. This measure is a relief measure where we help those candidates who sit for the first time or those who repeat uh, the uh, we repeat in the school and sit for a second time. So it does not mean that we do not include them. It does not mean that we don't have confidence in them. Now, the payment of examination fees is to help those students who have completed the basic studies, whereas for private studies, private candidates, we have other resources, other measures for them. So it's not the only way to help them. The continuous um, learning, uh, the continuous learning fund can also help to pay for the exam fees. No, for the time being, it does not pay for examination fees. I am talking about encouraging uh, continuous studies. Mrs. Cho uh, and the secretary, you have uh, heard. Um, Mr. Cheng's uh, I, views. Mr. Aulohin, well, I'm afraid there has been quite a waste of time so far. You are saying that you are, pay, you are paying for the examination fees, then you should cover everybody. Of course, whether we ha should sub, sub, subsidize um, candidates. Well, the crux of the matter is that the number of candidates is uh, dropping, and that is why you sh would like to help the um, uh, HKEAA's finance. 
Well, the money has to be spent in a wise way. You are saying 360 million going to the HKEAA. Well, if you pay for all candidates, that will be a commune. Now, you are now supporting the HKEAA financially so that it can go on holding HKDSE. However, in the education panel, I have raised a question I'd like to say again, that there are resources that are not being well used. In 2013, about 80,000 set for the exam. So the whole money in amount involved is uh, over 100 million. And there, there are uh, next year about 20, uh, uh, there are 20 less candidates. However, the cost is high, was higher. It was about uh, 190 million. Well, if you take into consideration inflation and staff cost uh, increase, then there is um, expenditure of 40, 000, 40 million more. Well, you said that you there was inflation, there was special education uh, arrangements. That was why the cost increased. Now, in 14, uh, 2014 and 2015, there are about 1,900 special students. In 2017 and 18, uh, such, this number has been increased by 1,000. However, the costs has been increased, um, has has doubled. Well, if uh, you have a doubling of the number, then you can have a doubled cost. However, the, uh, there's only a, uh, an increase of 1,000 for special students. And why is it that you have uh, such a big increase in the total cost? Do you have a more convincing, convincing argument? I'm afraid that is uh, resources being not very well spent. As for special candidates, every year the conditions differ. We cannot just take into account the number of, of, of special candidates only, because some candidates uh, would require uh, two examiners going to the uh, special candidate, and there is uh, there should be also an accompanying candidate, for instance, for oral exams. So there are special arrangements. There are uh, special candidates where you would have simpler way of helping them, for instance, um, extending the examination time, uh, where you have uh, ex uh, time cost, or bigger letters and characters for, for them to read, and that those are simpler. Well, you have 1,000 more special candidates. Are you saying that you need more support and you have more sta uh, higher standards, so you need more money? I just said that the special needs differ for special candidates. Well, of course, special candidates have special needs. And every year it varies. Well, of course, more such candidates would um, mean more uh, resources uh, needed. Are you saying that the standards are higher? Or for some special candidates in those 2,600 candidates, there are more special needs? Well, that, that would justify your increase. I'd like to clarify that this is not so, not really uh, what he what the uh, the member mentioned. Well, it does not mean that last year, if you have the same kind of uh, um, of uh, incapacity, it does not mean that the costs would be the same because the special needs are different. So the examination arrangement costs differ. Apart from inflation, each special candidate has different needs. So if you have complex cases, the costs would be higher. Mr. Tamman Ho, 
I'd like to ask for the it is second year this is the second year last year was the sum also 160 million no last year it was 140 thousand four hundred and forty million more. Let me check the number. What is the number? It is a hundred and forty seven million last year. I'd like to ask why is there such an increase, albeit a small increase? Um, was it that 160 million was earmarked last year, and you paid 147 million? Well, there are diff the uh, number of candidates is uh, different, and um, there's a four percent increase of the costs. Um, the number, the figure that you gave me was a real figure as uh, uh, paid out. Um, the application number uh, figure was um, 170 million. Well, I don't really. It doesn't make sense. So the application was about 170 million, and the actual cost was 147 cost. Well, you said the um, cost this year is a five percent increase. So if you. So, in fact, you have a lower figure being uh, um, earmarked if you take into account this 5% increase. 160 million includes 10% of contingency fee. Well, that may not be used, and that was the case last year that uh, we had a, uh, included in contingent, contingency fund, and that is why um, the actual expense was lower than the budgeted uh, number. Um, why is it that you do not regularize uh, such payment? You have come uh, two years because it's a small amount. It's only a, a hundred million uh, or so. Are you going to come back uh, next year and the year after? And I'd like also like to know the your 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 uh, consideration that you need a four year review of the HKEAA are you um looking at the operation of the HKEAA itself according to our plan we need two hour two years to discuss with the HK uh, EAA and then we'll have a consultation and after that we need two more years i understand that it took another two years for discussion. This is quite a long time because to EAA there's no difference to its work. It's just this amount, 160 million, whether they were paid by government. Instead of EAA to come up with a new something or to reorganize itself, it's just about the funding. Either the funding will come from the students or by the government. Why did it take about two years? And you claimed it would take two years for a public house situation. Well, the FO amendment bill can take about 20 days. And now that for 160 million, it will take two years to consult. Why take about two plus two years? Now that you have over a year experience, and this is not the first EA and getting the first uh, funding by the government, why it take two years? I think they want to know um, what is the scope of the review. <coughs> HKEA is run by a cap at 266. It's stipulated that HKEA, including the statutory powers, the responsibility, its role, and positioning in operation mode and financial management, and all this, so on. So if you uh, regularize the payment of exam fees, if you include the private students, on the other hand, then the make AHA unable to take in any exam fees. What's the HAA do all other stuff besides the SE? I'm not asking to waive all, for example, on ballet and dancing and all the overseas exams. 
I think well this it should why you what would have whatever said it haven't changed whether for what is as type exams offered the statute requirement nothing has changed if not they shouldn't be accepting this one sixty sixty million so let's not talk about the legal because it's definitely possible leave I still don't understand I'll say it for the next round anyway I would next Mr. Shu cafe if my memory serves me correctly I think there's like 50 billion surplus and the year before like over 100 billion of surplus now it's offering one relief, relief measure 160 million for this uh, budget helping you help the students and for the hundred well the two years before well well last year it was 140 million So for fifty million, will actually uh, increase to one hundred sixty million. Well, the student get their lunch money and uniform money and their books and textbook subsidy. So can you consider helping them? I think Mr. Shu is asking on regularizing the students. So it's not a problem about money. It's just had to do with a policy and a legislative amendment. If it's not about money, then what is it about? It would have a limited amount of funding. I suppose that um, for the lunch money and the allowances, the the textbook allowances should also pay for them. It, we have. Unlimited money since they are future. Why do we ask them to take on loans? We're supposed to pay for them. Witness to ensure we have to have the same amount of annual surplus. So, can you promise that the surplus will, will we have surplus year after year? It's important to support the students, but uh, we have to spend within our means. From the uh, uh, teachers, well, the undersecretary uh, well, uh, used to be a headmaster. Of course, uh, you would don't welcome. The, I welcome your uh, kindness. As a policymaker, we need to balance um, expense and in income. I will still support this 160 million uh, exam fee waiver. Will th this year we have 50 billion surplus, and we regularize it. Well, it's not that we had been in the red before. Now the U.S. China trade war. President Trump is not kidding with you, and he changes his mind all the time. And the Hang Seng Index and Dow Jones keep on dropping. Uh, the wholesale retail sector is the Oriental Daily News. They reported that um, the uh, food and industry had also a drop, and that people are holding on their wallets. It will affect our budget. We no longer have a hundred billion dollars surplus. If you regularize this, we need to carefully consider this. Well, it would be best if all the lunch textbook and and uniform must be uh, waived all the way to um, tertiary, the masters and PhD if we have the money. But you can't, you can't make sure that you have a surplus year of year. We have to carefully consider. You can't promise too much. So does that mean that before regularizing this? Will you help to link that to our financial surplus? Let me state it is more than money. Yes, we have to sort out our, our legal status. This is a one off relief measure. It's more than money, and yet, money is 
quite important. If we have oil, like well, sometimes if the European money countries will have a lot of money, they just pay for it all. You can see our cost would be quite nice. If you pay for it this year, to asking to pay for it regularly, I said. And then, and well, the list would go on. What happened to kind people? Just we'd have the money to pay for it. Well, we we don't have the money. I suppose you know Mr. Shu's comments. Next, Mr. Wu Chi Wei. I think Mr. Shu is over worried. So Jay, talk about a commitment of 160 million. I think a lot of the colleagues they just want to ask why you're only helping the school candidates or do you repeat students from the day and night school but not the private candidates. Are you claim well you get to the bigger question how do we utilize our resources no of your money spent on education we not I see at that post Dutchman camp we see that putting money into the sea is all right so it's a see a uh, divergent views on policies so I see there are two perspective the one is that why couldn't you why pay for the private students because they were cool. they're afraid they're not able to um, handle the increased number of candidates and second you worry that with a private student you may affect the uh, score distribution and under an exam regime are you any actual score or just uh, doing a curve is this uh, not norm referenced well if that's your score cor corresponding to the rank well even if we sit for exams we probably get the score we want how would that uh, affect the grades received by different students? We never expect the private students to affect the student grades. So can you explain? Uh, where, what is the problem about allowing the private students? Oh God. This payment for a, the exam fees is just a one-off. That's a re relief measure. Well, and the intent is to help the students who finish education reduce their burden. So that was the intent. Well, and we explained last year, it didn't include the private students and everything went smoothed. So this year, Operation of exams, we see that. So, can we have the impact to the exams if we include the private student? The well, first time we discussed it last year, a lot of colleagues said, well, it's all right to, well, as a one off measures, you should be able to, to, well, to act to benefit all students for equity's sake. So, how would it affect the smooth conduct of exams? Last year, that will a concern that if we don't set limits, that anyone can sit for exams, they usually affect the exam. Which part on the uh, let's say the doubling the number of candidates that would would definitely impact missions. But um, actually, the number of candidates keep on dropping. If I'm um, correctly from it speak, maybe at a twenty to thirty percent drop already. For each year, even if on the lower, you still get like forty thousand students. Um, 
you account for a limited number. Of, okay, they would not. They would never have a limited number of private students. So can you tell me how many private students will uh, will sit for it? HKDSE. Uh, we opened the door. Our intent was to help those who finished their education. On the other hand, now that we don't have the money, which had should be low fees, we have take include all the unrelated accounts. So let's say I'm just one. I'm a private student. I should be able. Just like a form six repeater, there's no difference, and yet you excluded me. For the repeat candidates, you will uh, was as high likely to influence the exam. I explained that many times. I don't have nothing new to add. It's not like assuming the private students will be making a scene. But we have to uh, consider whether there will be a sharp search of candidates, and that um, the whole exams are important to them. We have to minimize any variation so as not to distort the whole regime. Next, Mr. Gary Fan, second round, four minutes. Just now, Mr. Ray Chen. Uh, have asked and also part of the education panel on a meeting on May 3rd. We passed a non binding motion. The government had responded to the motions and, and quote that the uh, HDSC candidates will expect to drop for next years and therefore uh, exacerbate the f fiscal uh, state of the HD. We're discussing with the EAA. For study of feasible and long term financial options, but there's no proposal at this stage. Under Secretary told us that currently there are four years, in which two of which will be there will come with a proposal, and in two years will be for a public consultation because it will involve legislative amendment. Am I correct? Well, for four years is too slow. You actually could take you two years to come with a financial proposal to deal with a long-term problem. At the same time, the number of candidates is expected to decline over time, and it will actually take you you public consultation four years altogether. Look at the PAC report. The 2017 HK, the four top managers at uh, EAA together, there will be uh, 9.77 million. Each one we talk about being paid two to three million each. For this financial proposal, how you this from f uh, May 3rd, and uh, when do you form the plan? Well, I see it's too long. Anyway, you can compress the timeline. And while discussing the financial options, have you included in assessing the management remuneration and simplify the uh, paper marking arrangements so as to achieve uh, cost savings and expenditure so as to we can see that EA is capable to resolve or uh, uh, reduce their financial dilemma? Some of the questions have already been raised. Under Secretary, payment of examination fee, I repeat, is a relief measure. It has no direct link with the uh, financial difficulties of the HKEAA. For the financial package for the HKEAA, we do not have a definite um, package because uh, it is a complex, complex matter. It has to do with the independence. Uh, it's a uh, public image and it's a uh, sovereign um, financial institution. If it is a subvented um, organization, would it affect its independence? It is uh, something that we have to deal with with prudence. I am concerned with the um, management level remuneration, whether it will be 
uh, entirely subvented by the government. It's another matter. What I'm talking about is savings. Uh, Mr. Fan also asked the same question. When uh, are these um, uh, economic measures? Economizing measures, for instance, uh, the reduction of high level uh, management uh, remuneration and the marking arrangement. Well, these are elements affecting their finance. Of course, these would be included in our consideration. Can you shorten the time? Because four years is a very long time. Well, we have discussed it and we need four years. Of course, I will bring the opinion expressed here back to the um, Bureau. Chair, the um, Under Secretary has uh, answered the uh, repeated questions. Well, you can go back and see if you can shorten the time frame. Mr. Oloshin, well, I continue to ask if the money is well spent. Well, leasing schools is a very interesting matter. You lease, you, you lease uh, some schools, there is guidance. The HKEAA can borrow schools because um, they can conduct examinations, all kinds of examinations in uh, leased premises. Schools are not quite willing to uh, lease out their premise. Very often, if you want to borrow, their premise, you need a lot of persuasion. This um, article is valid, and that is why when you borrow uh, the premises, you don't really have to pay rent. Then you can cut your cost. Well, if it, that is not a co if that is not the case, then you have to pay rent, and it's part of the cost. However, for some premises. Well, you should have a standard. Holding exams, you have a standard. That is to pay certain rent for premises. Uh, well, have you had a review on such uh, arrangement? If this guideline is valid, the one that I cited, well, for the HKEAA, when it holds HKDSE, well, they can, through such arrangement, cut down their cost and avoid deficits. Let me simply reply, and maybe Dr. So can supplement. For the schools, if they lend it out for the HKEAA, they have to have security, they have uh, to have additional staff, or they have their air con. So, and very often, you need to have two or three weeks, and then you have two or three stories uh, involved in the examination, and the school has to put in resources uh, to assist uh, the exams because um, it's not only um, uh, uh, only uh, a matter of money because they have to uh, uh, assure that it is well run. Now, when they borrow premises, uh, the staff should come in to help. They have to prepare the examination uh, premises, and they have to return it back. So um, we are not talking about um, paying the rent only now. So this, the guidance says, is uh, free of charge borrowing of the premises. Um, so I think that it is best that we make that clear, that resources are being well used. Many members think that you should regularize such payment to help candidates to sit for exams. And I think this is a shared view of members present. I don't wish to see you coming back year after year. Well, 
if you don't come back the next year, then people will say, why don't you come back? So you should regularize it. Since, since it has something to do with the HKEAA, and since the HKEAA has very often deficits, so you should think that about assuring its financial sustainability, because this is a long-term solution to its deficit. Mr. Jeremy Tam, four minutes. I'd like to have an replies from the technical staff. When you answer Mr. Hu's question, I'm not sure that I understand. For instance, if I enter for a subject and there are five star candidates for this subject matter, for instance, he one would have 93 out of 100. If a candidate, a private candidate, scores 94 marks, so would it mean that there are 11 altogether for those uh, five-star candidates, or you would exclude the one who have uh, 93 marks and maintain 10? Well, for the HKDSE, we have a standard reference for marking. For the five-star candidates, Mr. Dr. So uh, uh, may explain. Mr. Tam's um, example, for instance, a private candidate scored 94 marks, and it, he is the 11th five-star candidate. So it, it doesn't uh, affect the uh, 10. So it doesn't um, uh, it doesn't affect all ten whether it, they they are number ten or number four or number three. So I think this should be made very clear for the public, or in your website or in your public uh, policy statements. Last year, when you proposed this, well, there would be candidates who are very high caliber, they would score very high. Then, according to Dr. So, this issue doesn't stand. So I'm surprised when such an opinion was expressed last year, um, the administration didn't come out, come, up, come out to clear it. Well, since it does not affect it, uh, the other candidates, then the private candidate would not affect the exam results. Whether whether the um, well, if you if the, those candidates can affect the um, the grading, then um, that should be made clear. Well, because the opposing view to cover uh, private candidates, it was due to some misunderstanding expressed last year. So you are now conducting a review with the HKEAA. You should make it very clear to the public. If you include private candidates and if you uh, regularize it for the payment for examination fees, you should make it very clear. If it's just a simple slogan, then that would that might give rise yet to some other opposition. Can you tell us why last year you didn't make clear make made that clear last year? We did last year for the diploma exam. We have um, said that we are not doing it by curve. We are doing it by standard way of marking. It's not by the norm reference. Now, Mr. Hu Chiwei. Second round, four minutes. For the manpower or the establishment of the HKEAA, can they cope with the uh, diploma exams? How many candidates can they deal with? For a long time, 
candidates were at 60 or 70,000. Recently, it dropped, the figures dropped. Does that mean that you reduce the manpower and you are not capable of dealing with uh, the candidates now? Or the manpower has been maintained and so the number of candidates would not affect whether the exams will run smoothly or not. Have you evaluated the number of private candidates? What is the proportion of private candidates in the total of candidates? In an extreme case, how do you assess um, that um, how many candidates increase would make it um, a substantial increase for, to cover the private candidates? Apart from the expenses, you have to uh, look at the premises, the one who uh, adjudicates or who mark the papers, uh, the security staff concerned. So we need all the manpower involved. For instance, for the premises, a particular for the oral exams, you uh, it, it is a quite a complex matter for arrangements. For instance, a teenager, a secondary student, and if there are four experienced candidates, the first timer would feel a lot of pressure from experienced candidates. Well, if these experienced candidates only sit for written exams, then all of a sudden the, ver the oral exams won't have enough pa uh, pa uh, enough uh, uh, candidates to to to, it, uh, to to have the exams to be held. So the operation of the exams, whether it be the order of the exams or whether the um, partners or the uh, candidates uh, that that would sit together with him with him it is very difficult to quantify the effects Verb, uh, oral exams only involve Chinese and English uh, but what about for the other subject matter would there be a face to face oral exams for the other subjects as well well for oral exams it is uh, the uh, it involves a more complicated arrangement well Apart from the English and Chinese oral exams, and you uh, you can you can uh, exclude these verbal examination for private candidates. It's a technical problem. Well, uh, for them to uh, sign it for a subject, you can't just exclude it from certain papers. Well, you just let them take the exam, but charge them full fees and be taken into other accounts. Well, the marginal costs haven't changed, so why can't you uh, let more people to in participate? How can you explain? Well, uh, for the idea by Mr. Wu, for the actual administration and the, which of the students will require a uh, full, charge full fee or not, then we let we count another kind of discrimination on unfairness. Well, so why do you exclude the oral exams? I think I'm sec under secretary with your comments. So maybe the she's not able to provide answer to you right away. Next, Mr. Eddie Chu, first round, five minutes. I think this discussion, well, this is not the first year, it got quite intriguing. Just, well, I guess that this financial secretary claimed that, oh, we had got some money left, and uh, each bureau would come up with a wish list of one off measures that will cost roughly the same amount of money so as to fill up the books for handouts and then and whoever official inside EDB and decide 
uh, they come up with this uh, exam fee waiver. So looking back, have you regretted of making such decision of waiving exam fees? Yes, of now this is going nowhere and also give rise to this four year consultation. So uh, to uh, take up more education responsibility, if you have more, more financial commitment, you wouldn't choose this. Anything to, to any to respond to this narrative, Mr. Chu? The payment of exam fees and the financial difficulty of EAA are unlinked. I'm asking whether you regret it. This is all seem to be such a mess and being um lamb blasted. I'm having to explain policies. Uh, just for the good of the students who are willing to take up the trouble. The more I listen, the stranger it gets. I want to ask the MSTB because now this is a contracted out self financing function. Besides the exam fees, but in the appropriation bill, do you have other? Outsource the public service. We need to be on a self-sufficient basis in which the government would also help pay part of the funding. Because you affect the operations of this outsourced organization. Are they having the same problem with the EAA and then um, they would ask for the uh, for another handout after one year? I think we have to explain um, clearly and on the payment of exams our relationship with the EA is not a con um, outsourcing relationship. I'd like the under secretary that um, the EA is a statutory organization in terms of the it have own rules on financial management. Maybe uh, we're all curious about that in the uh, budget for the one-off measures or special arrangements and how you choose which one to adopt. What usually will uh, look at uh, the affordability and relevance to the policy. For the actual implementation, we also take into account its feasibility and whether uh, it will contravene the statutory rule and the uh, normal conventions and governance. So in so and what's able to uh, iron out all those problems when we implement these. A question for Miss Ellis La. We try to avoid this. Let's say for Hong Kong Post Land Registry, liquor license. We try to avoid them, because now that you seems to touch on the question of self sufficiency, or whether we're losing money, whether they are being overpaid. And well, since uh, they set their own exam fees, well, um, if you set the, the fees high, then you have to pay more. Shouldn't we avoid it, uh, these uh, services? Thanks to Mr. Chu's concern. And for the measures proposed in the budget, whether they are regular or one off. On one hand, it would take into account the affordability, and second, would it take into account that the policy relevance and the uh, pra uh, practicability. Besides the FS office and and FSTB, it also consult the relevant policy department before we coming up with the decision as for the difficulty, like the undersecretary said. Sometimes it may not be as smooth as its launch, and well, even though we see eye to eye, that it doesn't mean that uh, we there the benef that we're not that will be think from the beneficiary perspective. Next, Ms. Yip, can you second round four minutes? Just now, uh, Mr. Jeremy Tan mentioned that whether the results of the private students will affect those of the school candidates. 
And Mr. Choi, Mr. Under Secretary Choi, uh, mentioned that there's no change. So that means there's no impact. Uh, from what I know, last year have uh, led to some changes. This is a new measure in which the results of the private candidates would not affect the school candidates. Maybe Dr. So can clarify. This question aside, as for whether we can regularize the payment of exam fees by the government, the Under Secretary Choi has, in her response to Mr. Chu, that the payment of exam fees by government and this financial difficulty of EA is two different things, that it should stay separate. Then the fiscal health of EA, now that you have four year review, then you just review it all you want. For the ex exam fees question, you can still make a decision right away. Of course, there may be some technical issues, for example, whether for the fee will be prescribed by the EAA. If it's fully paid by the government, that they, I think that's negotiable. When the government uh, was discussing with EA on the exam fees arrangement, as a regular measure, that is doable. The funding model of the HKEA should be reconsidered. Well, the EA was supposed to be self-sufficient. And we know that the number of students is related to the population size. Uh, in the past, we have a huge population since we have more candidates. Then the revenue of EA have been growing steadily. And however, we know that population will decline, so as the number of candidates, so the income will also drop. So the self-sufficiency model of the AA cannot be coped with the population fluctuations. We must come up with other ways. However, on the you should separate it from the. Uh, exam fees. If you bundle them together, in the next two year, we have to come back year after year discussing about it, which is a waste of time. Hope that the government can cons give it some thought. Well, as a self-sufficient, independent operating model is a new model. The EAA in the past belonged to the exam section under the education department. For well, the exam section under EDB, for the exams, public exams, they operated. If they waive the, f the fees, that would count as just a a government expenditure. Uh, now the operating model actually makes things complicated. I hope that the government can reconsider to separate the unbundle the two so as to. Uh, uh, regularized to payment of exam fees. So. I think the secretary has responded on many occasions. I suppose you didn't have to repeat it. I wonder if Dr. So would like to uh, supplement. Since 2012, the DSE has been launched, and the rate, the assessment mechanism is based on the whole pool of candidates as known referencing half huh? after a few years we notice that the the first batch what well, the the uh day student group was quite stable in twenty eighteen. Uh we use this group as the main uh norm referencing. So since twenty eighteen we uh use this group as for well. Mr Jeremy Tan mentioned that some of the really smart private students that will not uh, affect the proportion of students of day to school students and getting five star. Third rounds, Gary Fan, three minutes. I know that repeatedly that the secretary have answered that on many occasions, and apparently it seems to. Uh, 
uh, repeating her, the line to take. So may I ask the Dr. So of HKEAA. On the long term, well, well, I criticize the management, including yourself, which you are for you've been uh, being paid close to ten million a year. So you take about a uh, four years to which will involve a uh, discussion with government and two years of public consultation. May have the members question why it's taking so long for such a reform and a final proposal to deal with the financial difficulty of the self-financing EAA. Can you cite one particular factor which will uh, make this discussion for lasting four years instead of uh, just saying a basket of factors? Which particular factor have prevented you and the government by having to take so long for a long-term financial reform proposal? So we not retire in the next four years, are you? And the secretary, you said many times already. Just want to define the nature of the question. The financial difficulty of the EA is structural, which involves the uh, uh, exam operations. I think asking them, uh, asking them, uh, the staff to uh, blame uh, blame on the. Structure problem, as if you're blaming, or as if you're proposing a salary cuts to resolve the deficit, that's not good for the mor staff morale. For the details, I'll let uh, Doctor So to answer. Well, in the course of discussion, we need to encounter uh, the fact. Is a very complex question uh, for the financial problem as EAA. We're quite concerned and since the number of candidates are declining, so a new source of revenue and cost cutting will be uh, top work about a year into uh, work in EAA. We've been doing in earnest. As for the question of uh, of uh, management pay, that. All the staff at EA will have a transparent mechanism. I'm asking, is there a particular single factor that cost you that make you to need to take four years for the review? I believe it's not a sing single factor, a basket of factors rather. Um. And the secretary, um, your mic was off. No. Not one single uh, uh, element, but a, a whole basket of factors. Dr. So, is there a single factor? No. It is a very complicated and interlinked, interlinked elements um, that have uh, that that constitute a basket. So we need time, Mr. Eddie Chu. Thank you, Chair. Even though I had a dialogue just now, however, if I put together the members' views, the different exams held by HKEAA, there are two sorts. Members think that uh, some exams should be um, a public service. And for some other exams, for instance, professional exams, they can be kept for the they can be kept in the self sufficiency part. If you want to increase the exam fees, go ahead. Well, for instance, for the alcohol license, if you increase the fees, then Mr. Uh, Christopher Jiang would uh, would protest. Well, for the HKDSE, it should be a public service. The administration should take care of that. So you um, take away this from the HK 
EEA and their power of uh, setting the examination fees. Now, you are undertaking consultations and review. Um, Mr. Fan, uh, Mr. Gary Fan would like you to shorten the time for the review. Now, in the next three, four years, we will be faced with the same situation. For instance, for the next budget, um, the uh, secretary may come up with uh, another payment for exam fees. Then we have to discuss it. Well, the secretary would say, perhaps for next year, we now that we know that you are under discussion now. We will have a commitment. For instance, for four years, well, it would be about a hundred million. That is to say. Um, the commitment would be such and such amount for the next four years. Um, and we know that uh, after the review, there would be a long-term solution. So would that be the case? Secret Under Secretary, well, it is one off measure to, of relief, the reason being that we have financial surplus. Of course, for the next year, if there is still financial surplus, this could be considered uh, again. We are not talking about financial surplus because uh, members think that it is a public service and that fees should not be collected. Well, you have not done your review yet. Well, well, this is we are not regularizing it for the time being. Then you should do it for four years, in all one go. So you have a commitment for such a such uh, number of years. Thank you. In answer to Mr. Chu's question, it is not an operational matter. The Under Secretary has already said many times that this proposal within the financial framework, it is a one-off measure of relief. It is from this perspective that under the financial situation, can we follow this up? Would it be feasible? So. This has been already been explained in the document. There could be other discussions, and we are ready to explain. However, we have no idea. We, we have no. Um, we are we are doing it as a one-off, and we are not doing it as a transitional measure. You are repeating your question. So if you have any other questions, please uh, press the button, and I'll draw the line here. Next, Mr. Wu Chi Wai, the third round, th three minutes. Thank you. I keep to the same point of view. I do not want to discuss the change of the nature. The Under Secretary. Um, mentioned impacts. I am not convinced. The HKEE, objectively speaking, is able to cope with more candidates. And if you are worried about that, you can technically solve the question. The private candidates, uh, when they sit for English and Chinese language exams, you are worried about uh, uh, exam arrangements, you can charge them for that part. It's not a package deal. So I'm looking at it this way. I have not changed the nature of the exams, but it is an exam arrangement. You are an, um, in a very irrational manner exclude certain candidates from the payment. So 
if you cover such candidates, would it be in, co in contrary, contrary to the measure of relief as stated in the budget? Under Secretary, this new proposal, if next year we have the same, we'll take that into consideration. What is the difficulties involved? If we look at the money, it's a simple matter. But however, it has to do with the um, the running of the exams. Well, apart from the Chinese and English, well, um, they could be charged. But the, for the other subjects, they can be the fees could be waived. According to our data, most would sit for the English and Chinese um, exams. Um, there are hard uh, data supporting that. According to the same logic, why is it that you exclude certain subjects and oh, is the same logic as excluding certain candidates? Well, I'm. Well, it would seem to be logical. The, a, a certain cohort with different experience, they would have different uh, performance at the uh, oral exam. I accept that. But I'm asking if you could charge them for certain parts of it. Well, Under Secretary, the premises arrangement would also be affected. So we cannot only take into consideration the money involved or Or because of including um, private candidate, we would um, change the whole arrangement, and it is not fair to the um, candidates. Well, you would take into consideration his um, opinion in future. Mr. Gary Fan, fourth round, two minutes. Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chairman, please do not answer for the Under Secretary on behalf of the Under Secretary or prompt her. Now, I am very much concerned. Four years framework time frame to uh, solve the financial uh, uh, difficulties of the HKS HKEAA. Well, I would like to confirm from you the confirmation from you whether the remuneration structure has to be discussed as well. It, ha it is an established mechanism for the remuneration of the HKEAA. Every three years, we invite outside consult a consulting firm to have a holistic uh, review whether uh, uh, whether how wh whether the um, remuneration structure and the competition competitiveness would be uh, matching those of the um, market. Well, you have a different answer. So you are saying that in the financial review, you are not going to include remuneration adjustments. No, I didn't say that. I'm only saying that the established uh, mechanism, um, because it was um, it was it was done several years ago, and it will be done in a few years from hence. I am saying that in the financial proposal to solve the problem of the uh, financial difficulties, as in particular cost cutting, would that include that of revising the remuneration of the management level? Um, I'm, well, are you saying no? No, I'm not denying that. I'm saying that it will be it done in a holistic matter. Everything, all will be taken into consideration, including the salary. We have a mechanism. In 2020, we'll, if there's no new um, method, then we'll follow the same mechanism. The Under Secretary. Anything that the two has to do with cost and income, we will deal with it in a holistic manner. 
that was what Dr. So said. The uh, financial difficulty is structural. It is not one single element that can solve the matter. Mr. Franco Gary Fan and Mr. Chen Ji Chuan have proposed third um, a motion or uh, by virtue of 37A. These motions are directly linked with the uh, item. So we are now decide whether that can be um, discussed here or considered here. Any request for separate vote? So we'll ring the bell. Mr. Gary Fan, can you read your motion? Uh, we urge that the uh, government can regularize the payment of examinations fees for the candidates sitting for the HKDSE. We have two 37A motions to deal with. First is to vote whether to agree with deal with the ad hoc motion by Mr. Gary Fan. Thank <laughs> you. 
波都未落嚟嘅。現在開始表決。Will it begins? Before I announce the results, members please check your vote. Voting is stop. Please show the results. Fifteen for, twenty-eight against, zero abstentions. This motion is negatived. Anyone asking for the bell to be shortened to one minute? This debate will in accordance to FCP and for the voting on similar motions, the vote will be conducted one minute after the bell. For those who agree, please raise your or claim a division. Okay, the bell rang for five minutes. <laughs> Hi, Damon Ho Yun. Mr. Tam, even though I cast in my vote, I would have you noticed that I'm rushing back, which is I it's in time to press the present but not yes before you cut off. I know this is unintentional. Maybe you're reading out the script. I hope that you can take note. We'll give you more time to press the button. You have to check if anyone rushing into the room. Sure.
各位提醒，誒呢一個係投票。Remind you that we are、uh, voting to whether we agree that the division bell will be shortened from five to one minute. 而家開始表決。Voting begins. Before I announce the results, members please check the vote casted. Voting has softly showed the results. Twenty-nine present, thirteen against, one abstentions. I agreed. Decided that members agreed to shorten their division bell. Next, a motion by Mr. Ray Chan. Can Mr. Ray Chan read out? In accordance to FCP 37A. Anyone claim division? Mr. Chen Han Ben, claim division. Please ring the bell first. Mr. Chen. And according to the RCP 37A, I move that in view of the government payment of HKD examination fees for is only applicable to school candidates and repeat students at school, excluding private candidates. And recently, the Uh, registration and exam fees of HDSE keep on increasing. The private students not only not able to benefit from the exam fee waiver, able to pay for high fees. This committee urged the HEDB to uh, pick up the educ the exam costs after their first attempt within a year to reduce the economic burden of private candidates who are Hong Kong permanent residents. I'm actually c copying. The motion by Mr. Xu at Education Panel, and which was passed. I hope that uh, those uh, uh, only limited to students who would like to retake the HDSE immediately after the first attempt. Voting begins. We announce the result, and please check your vote. Voting has sharply showed the results: sixteen for, twenty-eight against. This motion will not be processed, and now we will vote on this funding proposal. Any member claiming division? Please. Oh, yes, Mr. Jeremy. Oh, please. Bell rung for one minute. Voting begins. Before I announce the results, please check your vote. Junius Ho, you would you like to vote? Voting has stopped. Please show the results. Forty-four, four, no against and no abstention. I decide that this funding proposal is approved. Let's have a ten-minute break. 工作人員要嘛，你真係。